Understanding Google Ads metrics is essential for having success on the platform. It probably goes without saying, but even when you first get into your Google Ads account, the overview is basically just a whole bunch of metrics, all right? And when you understand what these metrics mean, then it's like understanding exactly what's going on with your ads and what needs to change in order for you to get better results. So let's dive in, take a look at some key metrics that you really need to grasp and fully understand in order to have success on the platform. Now, as I was saying, we're in the overview section here and you can change these around, right? Or you can check out the conversion rate, 23%, the ROAS, which is return on ad spend. Uh, there's different metrics that you can select from these to see in more of a graph format how things are performing over time. And then from there, if you go over to your campaigns, I'm just going to switch over to here, you can see this is the campaign that we're running here. And we have a whole bunch of metrics that are showing here. So to change these, by default, yours is probably going to look a little different than mine. But if you go to columns here, you can click modify columns. And you'll see that there is a ton of <laughs> metrics that you can choose from. <laughs> In fact, we're not going to go through all of these metrics because there's just so many different options that you can implement these days. Uh, but basically all you do is come to the little drop down. You'll see a metric. You can even hover over it to get a uh, more accurate understanding of what you know, conversion rate is how often on average an ad interaction leads to a conversion. So it's basically just uh, conversions over impressions or clicks, I mean. So how many clicks does it take you to get to a conversion? That's going to be your conversion rate. How many conversions are you getting? What's the cost per conversion? What's your optimization score? And a lot of the, some of these are going to be added by default, but you can just go in and check different ones like if you want to see your interaction rate or different things you just check these it'll add it over here you can also move these around so if you don't want the bid strategy to be at the top you can select it move it around and then just click apply and that's going to save your custom columns here so that you can actually see the metrics that you want to see now starting with budget this is pretty obvious but it's important to <laughs> have your budget set properly here we'll be able to see the the status so it's eligible right now we got the bid strategy we're set to maximize conversions I like to have target CPA here just so I can see if we're using target CPA what the target is set at and target CPA is just your target cost per action or cost per conversion that's another way of looking at it so you can set a limit you can tell Google, all right, run my ads as much as you want, so long as I'm getting conversions at whatever, thirty less than $32 per conversion, right? Which is what our, our current cost per conversion is, 31.06. Then we can see our conversion rate. We already talked about that. Of course, you can hover over these columns here, too, to actually see the difference. Like with all conversions, this is the total number of conversions that are measured in your account including ones you're trying to track and ones you're not really trying to track. So in this instance, we are tracking two different types of phone calls, first time phone calls and repeat phone calls. Repeat phone calls are not counted as conversions because we don't want Google ads to be optimizing for people calling us four five, six times. We really want Google ads to optimize for people calling us the first time. And then if they call multiple times, that's cool. We, we want to track that and see how many people are calling back. But there's a difference between all conversions and conversions. Conversions is basically what you're telling Google Ads to optimize for, right? Of course, you've got the cost per conversion, which is how much it's costing for each conversion, the conversion value. So what is the value of the conversions we've received? It's roughly $22,750. And that's how we calculate the conversion value over cost also known as your return on ad spend, which is basically just the amount that you've spent on the ads, which in this case is $2,205 in a month, divided by, 
or excuse me, it would be the conversion value divided by the cost, which gets us 10.32. And that basically just means for every dollar that we spend on ads, we get $10.32 back, right? Of course, we've got clicks. That's pretty obvious. It's just how many people clicked on your ads. The average cost per click, which is good to know. How many impressions we're getting. So that's how many times your ads are showing up in the search results. And then, of course, if you divide these numbers, you get the uh, click-through rate here, 7.15%. And then we, oh, target row has is kind of out of place. It should probably be over here by target CPA, but... It's just good to know if we're running, uh, like with the target CPA bid strategy, you can run your ads and tell Google, all right, run my ads as much as you want so long as I'm getting a return on ad spend that's higher than 10, right, or a thousand percent in this case. Uh, so that would show here if we were using that bid strategy. It's going to sh it's gonna be blank if we're not using this bid strategy, but I like to just have it here so I know when we're using it, what it what it's set as and then these last few here are really relevant in pretty much all situations but a lot of people don't really understand how these work so you have search loss impression share from budget which is essentially the the number of times your ads could show up in the search results but they're not because you don't have enough budget on the campaign which is only at 15% I find you want it to be somewhere around like 10 to 15, 20%. If it goes higher, or I mean lower than that, basically what's going to happen is you're going to end up spending more per lead because you're paying more to get in front of more people and get more clicks, et cetera, et cetera. So it's actually good to have a little bit of search loss impression share from budget in a campaign, at least from my experience. And then search loss impression share from rank, that essentially just means... How many, how many times could we show up in the search results but we're not because we're not ranking high enough in the search results? So these numbers fluctuate. It depends on your niche and a whole bunch of different factors. But if this is like 99%, <laughs> then usually that's an indication that your ad quality is really poor and you need to make some adjustments in order to have your ads showing up at the top of Google. Because if you remember, Google's main goal is to improve the user experience on Google so people keep using Google, right? Makes sense. And so if when somebody looks at your ad, it has they have a terrible user experience because it's not relevant to what they search for and your landing page sucks or your website sucks, <laughs> then you're going to get a lot of bounces and a lot of bad interactions with your ads, which is going to cause the rank to drop and you're going to be showing on like page two where nobody ever goes to so you actually never show up in the search results and that's going to lead to like a 99 percent search loss impression share from rank right and then this number your top search top impression share this is just the uh the percentage of times that we are showing up in the top of the search results so that's the the ads that you see at the very top of google and then absolute top impression share is basically just the percentage of times when you're showing up at the very top which is like the, num the number one yeah the most prominent search position which is basically going to be the number one ranked spot so we're showing up 10% of the time as like the number one position ultimately and of course we got the campaign type and then the the infamous optimization score <laughs> which this is really just based on your recommendations over here. So if you start applying these recommendations, then your optimization score will improve. However, the caveat to that is that these recommendations are um, are given to you by artificial intelligence. So the artificial intelligence doesn't really have context about what's going on in your campaign. It's just looking at data and numbers. So that's why they're called recommendations because you're supposed to look at them and see what needs to be applied and then apply what is relevant based on the recommendations, right? So I wouldn't pay too much attention to your optimization score. It, it's not actually an indication of how well your ads are performing. It's really just more of an indication of how many recommendations you've applied in your account. <laughs> but with, with those, uh, 
metrics and understanding you know what those mean and monitoring those you'll be able to start digging into your ad groups and your actual ads and your keywords and everything else to see okay where am I getting the most conversions where's the lowest cost per conversion where am I getting the highest value from my ad spend we can you know look at the click-through rate you can see if you need to put more budget towards the campaign or maybe the quality of the campaign is is or the quality of the ads are not great so you need to make some adjustments there I mean between these basic metrics here you can usually get a pretty good indication of what's happening at a campaign level keyword level and an ad level and even ad group level which will help you then determine what's a winning ad or campaign or ad group and what's a losing ad campaign or ad group in which case you can start tweaking things adjusting things turning things off turning new things on testing new stuff until you start to get these numbers increasing to a, to a point where you're happy with the results so I hope you found this helpful if there's anything you did have questions about in terms of Google Ads metrics or anything like that, don't hesitate to reach out. You can just drop your questions in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get back to them there. Look, if you're the type of person that just doesn't even want to deal with Google Ads anymore, <laughs> then you can always reach out to me. Uh, my company is Missoula SEO Geek. I'll leave a link to my website down below, but we do manage Google Ads for different companies and different industries, and you can come learn about what we do, what makes us unique. You can even read some of the testimonials from some businesses that we've taken from zero to over a million in revenue, like this one here. And really just see that, you know, this is the type of thing that's gonna explode your business growth. So feel free to reach out. You can always give us a call or contact us through our website and look forward to working with you.